welcome back to my channel. So this is the first video I've done since I've gotten my major haircut and I'm still getting used to it, but I love it. I've always been into really long hair, but recently, I don't know, I just, a stroke of change has come over me. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've been getting tons of requests on fat loss tips. As you can probably tell by this video, today we're gonna to be talking all about fat loss. So I'm gonna be sharing with you my top 10 tips for fat loss. First and foremost, my number one tip is to be in a calorie deficit. Now, how to be in a calorie deficit? First, you need to determine what your maintenance calories are, and then essentially you have to be below your maintenance calories. What are maintenance calories? So your maintenance calories is the calorie amount that you neither lose or you neither gain. You stay the same, essentially. In order to lose weight, you have to be in a calorie deficit. So there's two approaches that you can do in order to be in a calorie deficit. You can um, approach it by decreasing your food or you can increase your expenditure. So I personally love food. I'm a total foodie. However, just depending on my day, um, if I have a really busy day, I will just choose to decrease my food. Whereas if I have more of a relaxed day on my schedule and I have more time to increase my expenditure, I will do so by just doing an extra cardio session or things like that. So uh, those are two helpful tips to approach a calorie deficit. Now, something I wanted to mention that's really important is intermittent fasting. So if you've ever heard of intermittent fasting, there's tons of different ways to do it. Um, a lot of people will choose to um, take the 16-8 approach where they will actually fast for 16 hours and then they will condense their meals in an eight hour time frame. Most of the time people will tend to push their meals off or you can choose to do a 24 to 48 hour nutritionally supported fast. Now that one you have to be um, careful with because you have to make sure that it's nutritionally supported. So you're not um, bringing your body in a catabolic state. So just make sure that um, if you do decide to do the 48 hour fast that it is nutritionally supported. My second tip for fat loss is vegetables. Vegetables are a huge part of my fat loss phases. They are really low in calorie, they're high in micronutrients, and high in fiber. Fiber helps you feel fuller longer. So vegetables are a great way to add volume to your food. A helpful tip that I like to do is um, I will actually prepare veggies in advance so I can snack on them throughout the day or add them to any meals. I will cut up peppers and broccoli and cauliflower and carrots and anything, you name it. Mushrooms, I love vegetables. Just depending on my day, if I have a, a hectic day, I will actually, I will cut them up, I'll keep them all in the fridge, and then I'll portion them out so I can either have them as a snack throughout the day or, um, or you know, at least they're prepared, they're cut and washed. So if I do add them to my meal, um, they're just, they're super handy and they're already ready for me. Now, the third tip I wanted to cover is protein intake. Protein intake is so important simply because protein is the most satiating macronutrient. What does that mean? That means that it actually helps you feel fuller for longer, keeping you more satisfied throughout the day during your fat loss phase, which is crucial because if you're in a calorie deficit, you will tend to be more hungry than usual. So make sure that your protein intake is on point and make sure that you're getting the best protein out there. It has to be undenatured. That is a no compromise. You have to make sure that your protein is undenatured, which allows your body to absorb the protein at a much better rate, which will actually in turn keep your satiety up even higher. Oftentimes, um, if you're on a plan with a coach or if you're following a system, you'll have your macronutrients set in percentages or portion sizes. Um, and what that means is your proteins, fats, and carbs. So what I like to do um, and how I like to 
monitor my macronutrients is portion control. So oftentimes I always look at my plate and try and just make it so you have two fistfuls of veggies. Now remember what I said about vegetables. Veggies are really low in calories, they add volume to your food, and they're super high in micronutrients. So having it well proportioned is key, but I actually have a formula that you can follow um, to determine what your maintenance calories are, and then based on your maintenance calories, you can actually choose your um, protein, carbs, and fats. So that's really fun. The fourth tip I wanted to cover is water intake. Water is so important to your fat loss phase. And it's just important in general, right? It helps your skin, and your vital organs. Water is, as you know, so important to us. But increasing your water intake during your fat loss phase will help flush out any extra toxins that your body's holding on to. Not to mention, it will cut cravings. Personally, I have an insane appetite and half of the time I'll be thinking I'm hangry when really I'm just thirsty and that's when water plays a huge part. So I'll just have a big glass of water and I'll feel good again. So just try it out. Maybe a big glass of water before you sit down and have a meal, sip on it throughout the day, have a glass of water before bed, first thing when you wake up. Just try and up your water intake. I personally like to have between two to three liters a day I just find my body does so well. You can never drink too much water. <laughs> Stay hydrated, sis. The fifth tip that I wanted to cover was sauces and seasonings. So oftentimes we're thinking, oh, well, I'm eating all this veg, but the dips or the sauces that I'm putting on it or dipping them in tend to be really high in calories. And that's when um, it can actually backtrack your progress. So you really want to make sure that you're watching the sauces that you're using, but also the reason why I wanted to, I thought this was an important topic was because I want this to be a value to you. I want you to walk away with this thinking, okay, I want to enjoy this plan. You have to find joy in the journey. And if you're constantly eating plain chicken breast or just plain meals with no flavor, chances are it's not going to be sustainable that's when you're gonna bring your progress to a halt or you'll completely backtrack and actually um, go backwards in your progress, which is the last thing we want. So um, making sure that you enjoy your plan and it's fun and flavorful is really helpful and more you're more likely to stay on track and reach those body goals. Just a tip that I like to use is, um, I really like mustard and it's super low in calories and salsa is another good one. Oh my gosh, it's like 15 calories for four tablespoons, it's nothing. And it adds a little bit of a kick, it's really yummy. Um, I love to use this organic salsa that I get from Costco, it's really, really good. I love to add seasoning, I love seasoning. There's this really good no salt organic spice that you can get at Costco, it has garlic and red peppers and tons of different spices inside of it. Boom, a quick dash of that and you're good to go. Just to recap, just be really mindful of the sauces that you use, but make sure that you enjoy your plan. The sixth tip that I wanted to touch on is sleep. Sleep is so important. I find, you know, on average, if you get between seven to eight hours of sleep, that's great. Um, optimal, it would be eight and plus. But honestly, sleep is what it will help your muscles recoup. It plays a huge part in your um, fitness journey. So I definitely recommend you monitor your sleep and make sure you get a lot of sleep. So try going to bed earlier, maybe try having a chamomile tea, or I love to use this all natural spray that enhances my sleep. Um, just to get a really full night's sleep because sleep is so important. And you wanna make sure that you get in the REM sleep, so the rapid eye movement sleep, because that's when the recuperation really happens and all the healing really happens. You can thank me later for that one. Tip number seven is stress. Now, stress can play a huge part in your fitness journey as well. A little bit of stress is okay. When you go to the gym, you're literally ripping your muscles. You're putting stress on your body, and that's okay. It's a different kind of stress. You know, you're, um, you're putting your body under stress 
in order to transform it and in order to for it to become this beautiful masterpiece that you work so hard for right whereas there's different kinds of stress like relationship stress money stress job stress just everyday life stressors that can lead to prolonged stress that's what we don't want because if you have prolonged stress it can lead to a prolonged release of cortisol, which can increase insulin resistance, which we don't want. That's the last thing we want. So monitoring your stress is really, really important. Try to do things that help your body get relieved of stress, like yoga, um, meditation. I like to pray. Um, I like to go for walks. Um, another thing that I love to incorporate to help me reduce my stress is adaptogens. I incorporate adaptogens every single day. They actually help your body adapt to its environment. Um, adaptogens are clinically proven to reduce stress. So if you can, make sure that you can incorporate adaptogens into your everyday life because those are my lifesavers. <laughs> now, tip number eight is a really important one. And I know some of you guys might roll your eyes, but Tip number eight is really important if you wanna make some serious shred gains. So I recommend incorporating at least three or more hit and ab sessions. Um, they're super quick, they're super convenient. Back in the day, I used to be really into um, organized sports and I was always a member of an athletic team. And then when I went away to college and university, I sort of just um, focused on my studies, but I got really into weightlifting. Now that I'm out of college and university, I'm sort of falling back in love with um, cardio. I recently just got back from a trip from Spain and oh my gosh, it was beautiful. I ran the coastline every single morning in this beautiful beach town. The sun was beaming on me, the waves were crashing and you know, I, it was just a good morning run on my way to the gym and um, yeah, I just, I really loved it but I noticed it was really hard on my joints and if you're like me, um, who has a love-hate relationship with cardio, incorporating a quick hit and abs is always my go-to throughout the week. I love to incorporate it sometimes in the morning fasted or sometimes you know, after my workout just to get a good sweat session. So those are always fun. Now tip number nine is so important to me personally. I love to walk. Now walking is so important to me. Not only does it play a little part of your cardio, but it gets me out of the kitchen. So whenever I have those food cravings, you know, if I go for a walk, it cuts them completely because I'm out in nature and you know, I'm just enjoying the beautiful scenery. I find it just helps ease my mind. There's nothing a good walk in nature can't fix. Am I right? <laughs> I love walking and you know, it's fun to just walk with my dog. I'll walk with my mom, just grab a friend or a family member and just go for a walk. It'll help get your mind off those food cravings. It'll help play into your cardio and it'll help lower your stress because honestly, like when you go for a walk, you just feel good in nature. You, you breathe the fresh air and you just go out there and, and sort of think a little bit. So walking is really important. Now, last but not least, tip number 10 would be accountability and mindset. Now, I've given you all these tools that I personally use for my fat loss phases, right? And there's tons of stuff, anything online, on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, anywhere on social media in the fitness industry fat loss tips, how to gain muscle, anything like that, right? It's all about your mindset. You can research as much as you want. You can read as many books as you want, but if your mindset's not right, you'll never reach your goal. You're gonna stay stuck where you are. You have to set goals and be in the mindset um, to reach them because motivation is great, but self-discipline is the key. So make sure you set a goal and you know exactly why you want to reach that goal. Why are you doing this? Why are you starting this fitness journey? And accountability is huge. We can internalize our goals and tell ourselves our goals and hype ourselves up. But when we start to externalize our goals and we share them with our friends and family and we verbalize it to them and we tell them, this is where I am, this is where I want to go, you know, it's it's easy to give up on ourselves sometimes, right? You know, 
you start to have those self-limiting beliefs, but your friends and family want to see you succeed. They don't want to see you fail. They want to see you reach your goals. So if you share with your friends and family, not only will they help give you motivation on those rainy days that you just feel like giving up or that you're lacking some motivation, sharing with friends and family and finding accountability partners is so important. You can reach out to your bestie or your significant other or your sister or whoever it may be um, and just tell them your goals. You could even have more than one accountability partner. You can have a little group of you guys. I know most of my viewers are girls. So, you know, if you want to have a little healthy competition and make this a fun challenge, you can reach out to your girl gang and ask them, you know, does anyone have any health goals that they want to reach? You know, maybe we can do this together. Maybe we can um, challenge each other and make this fun and exciting because the last thing we want is you starting and stopping, starting and stopping. Make lifestyle changes. And if you do that with your crew, Chances are you guys can do it together and actually flourish together. So that's really important. And I personally love group challenges and I love accountability partners, you know, because I'm human and so are you. And sometimes you have a rainy day where you're just lacking motivation and self-discipline really comes into play. But it's always nice to have those partners and those loved ones backing you up and just cheering you on and being your squad. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that this brought value to you and I hope that this was helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and I will catch you guys next time.